How about making your own smartwatch? That might be the thought you'll have after watching this review. It's definitely not the easiest task, but with this little board right here, at least it's a great place to start. On this channel we've already looked at several ESP32-S3 development boards, and this one from Waveshare is yet another variation from that big family. Let's find out what makes it different from the others. Please support the channel with the like and subscription, and let's get started. It's always nice when a board arrives not in a plastic bag, but in a solid case, and in this case even packed with foam for protection. Inside the box you will find the board itself and a pair of pin heaters. The model is called Waveshare ESP32-S3 Touch AMOLED 1.64, which immediately gives away its main features. Let's take a closer look. At the heart of the board is the ESP32-S3 R8, with 512KB of SRAM, 384KB of ROM and 8MB of PSRAM. To expand the available memory it also comes with 16MB of flash storage. Here it is, right here. The charging chip is the ETA6098, which allows you to connect a Li-Ion battery and charge it directly via the USB Type-C port. Very convenient. On each side of Type-C port you will find two buttons, boot and reset, placed symmetrically. There are also two LEDs, one shows when the board is powered on and the other indicates the charging status of the battery. And what about wireless connectivity? The ESP32-S3 R8 supports Wi-Fi 2.4 GHz and Bluetooth 5 LE. This little red part is the ceramic antenna used by default, but if that's not enough for your project, you can switch to an external antenna. You'll need to resolder this tiny resistor right here. There is also a microSD card slot. If you want to separate the board into two parts, just unscrew these hexagonal brass standoffs. They're attached to the display frame. The display itself is 1.64 inches, 280 by 456 pixels, almost 17 million colors. The driver is the CO5300, not a very common one honestly, it's my first time working with it. But the display is bright and vivid. Running the LVGL demo sketch shows just how responsive it is. The touchscreen works very well too, you can even type text on this tiny on-screen keyboard. Now let's disconnect the display ribbon cable. Scratching the frame a little, yes, it's metal, likely aluminum, so the display is relatively well protected. The frame separates along with the screen and the touch driver. On back side of the board we have a 3-axis gyroscope and 3-axis accelerometer, the QMI8658. It's also worth nothing the large number of exposed pins. You can connect peripherals to expand the functionality. Alright, let's put everything back together. On the manufacturer's website you can find all of the technical details, including a 3D model. Since I recently bought a 3D printer, I decided to design a custom case for this controller. After a couple of failed attempts, I finally got the result. A working wristwatch. The strap, by the way, is not 3D printed, it's from Casio Watch, but in fact you can use any 22mm strap you like. I will leave the link in the description, so you can download and print it yourself. I also got a 200mAh battery, and I'm very curious to see how long it will last if used as an actual smartwatch. The controller comes with a factory test firmware that lets you check the onboard sensors, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I also uploaded the LVGL demo we saw earlier, and even complex widgets run very smoothly at high refresh rates. So it's definitely an interesting product, but as of now, there aren't any ports of the popular firmwares we've seen for other ESP32-S3 boards in my previous videos. I'll try to port one of them over this board, guess in the comments which. And of course I'll tell you what results I get. What would you make with this Arduino style board? Please leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you very soon in the next video.